another optimization problem. So we're going to form a cardboard box from a rectangular piece of cardboard. The dimensions of our piece of cardboard are going to be 6 by 10. I'm going to take a square out of each corner. So I'll draw my picture. For each square, we'll need to know what the dimension of the square is going to be, so I'm just going to name that with a variable x. Once I have that, I want to find the box with the largest volume. So we're going to flip the sides up. That's going to give us a box, and then we can start labeling those sides. So the height is just going to be, okay, this little segment here is going to come up. So the height is just going to be x, the dimension of the square. For this front length, that's going to be 10, but we're taking two squares out, so I'm taking out 2x, so I get 10 minus 2x. And then for this side, we'll have taking that side length of 6, taking out two squares, so we're taking out 2x. So we have 10 minus 2x, 6 minus 2x, and x. If I want the largest volume, well, I need the equation for the volume of a box. That's just length times width times height. So we put those into our volume equation, and I get x, 10 minus 2x, 6 minus 2x. This is all in one variable. So all I need to do now, take the derivative, look for critical points, and then those will be candidates for my answer if I throw in end points also. So we expand our volume in terms of x, and then I take the derivative. I set it equal to 0. To get an answer for this, we just use the quadratic equation and crunch it down to numbers. So the two candidates we'll get are going to be 4.12 and 1.21. If I take a look at 4.12, problems arise. If you notice, this side is going to be of length 6, and the most I could get, if I let x take up the whole entire side, that's going to mean 2x would be equal to 6, or x would be equal to 3. So the biggest we can let our x be is 3. 4.12, not going to work. If I put two of those together, that's going to give me 8.24, which is going to be much bigger than this side. So my first candidate is a fail. 1.21, that's perfectly fine by the test I just did. So I'll stick that into the volume equation, and we see that V of 1.21 is 32.8. That's going to be my candidate for a maximum. So I'll set up a little picture of the graph of the volume. And so we see that we have one point at 1.21. Y value is 32.8. Let's take a look at some other stuff. Well, we can get boundaries on our domain by just taking a look at the picture. First off, probably the smallest I could let x be is 0. That's not going to be very interesting because we won't have any volume there. If I let x be equal to 0, we're not taking squares out. We're just looking at our rectangular piece of cardboard. That thing's going to have volume 0. So that gives me a point here. Similarly, if I let x be equal to 3, well, that's taking out as much as I can out of this side. We won't get a volume because there'll be nothing to flip up. There might be a little area in the middle but that area will still have volume equal to 0. So we notice over at 3, we're going to have 0 also. OK. I'm going to look for increasing and decreasing now. So I'll just split the region along our critical point, And then I just need to check one point in each region against the derivative to determine if we're increasing or decreasing. So on this side of 1.21, I'm going to choose 1. I put it in the derivative, 8 comes out, so that's going to be increasing on this side. For the other side, I'm going to choose 2. That's between 1.21 and 3. So we put that into the derivative, and what comes out is minus 20. So that's going to be decreasing on this side. I connect the dots, increasing up, decreasing down. That tells me that my point is definitely a maximum, and so we're out of the woods.